You are listening to the Cellulite Site Podcast, episode number three, Rise and Rinse, step one in the Cellulite Circuit, igniting your day with the Cellulite Circuit morning ritual. Welcome to the Cellulite Site, where we meet cellulite challenges with care, confidence, commitment, community, compassion, concern, consistency, and courage. And now your host, Bree Cox Kennedy. Hello, my beautiful friends, and welcome to another empowering podcast from the Cellulite Site. Today, we're going to dive into the transformative world of the Cellulite Circuit. We will be unraveling the first step in our daily morning ritual I call Rise and Rinse. Think of it as a refreshing and powerful shower for your internal organs. Imagine starting your day with an invigorating zest of half a lemon, a hint of ginger blended into warm water. Now, before you dismiss this as just a passing health food fad, this podcast will reveal the multiple benefits of the powerful fruit. And you too, my dear friend, might just be on board to incorporate this transformative ritual. But what about my morning coffee? I can hear you protesting. Trust me, I get it. I've been exactly where you are now. And sometimes I still am. It took me months to embrace the changes that I needed to make all in pursuit of one goal, and that is reversing the stubborn cellulite that had become an unwelcome companion. As my coach always says, the better you get at dealing with discomfort, the more dreams you have come true. So rise and rinse isn't meant to avoid coffee altogether. We're just simply delaying gratification for a little while. It's a commitment to your body's well-being. As you embark on the first 20 minutes of your day with this revitalizing elixir, you'll probably echo my initial sentiments. Can I really give up my morning coffee? Well, for me, the answer is both yes and no. Yes, because you're about to embark on a journey that empowers you to redefine your personal health care. It's not about deprivation, but rather transformation. And no, because we're just simply saving the coffee experience for a little later. And only you know when that moment is right for you. For me, the process of wrapping my brain around all the changes really took me a few weeks. I love waking up with a double cappuccino, and the idea of parting with my beloved brew was daunting. And I know if you're nodding along, understanding the struggle, you're not alone, which is precisely why I am building the Cellulite site, so we can all do this together. (laughs) However, ladies, I do have to say that within just about four days of sipping on this elixir of warm lemon water mixed with ginger, my belly felt flat and I could definitely feel that my jeans were noticeably looser. I was quickly hooked and committed to this new morning ritual. For me, coffee transitioned from a morning necessity to a mid-morning reward after conquering the cellulite circuit routine. So let's dive into why the Rise and Rinse ritual is a transformative game changer. You may already be familiar with the numerous advantages of lemon water. But let's take a closer look at some key facts that explain why I have incorporated it into the cellulite circuit. Number one is detoxification. Studies have shown that warm lemon water can act as a gentle detoxifying agent 
by supporting liver function and promoting the elimination of waste from the body. Number two, it aids in digestion. The acidity of lemons can stimulate the production of digestive juices, promoting healthy digestion. Potassium aids in breaking down and utilizing carbohydrates. Number three, lemon acts as an appetite suppressant and curbs hunger, making it easier to resist those tempting snacks between meals. Number four, hydration. Lemon water is a good source of hydration, and starting your day with a glass of warm lemon water can help replenish the fluids lost during the night and kickstart your metabolism. And number five, rich in vitamin C. Lemons are a rich source of vitamin C, which is known for its immune-boosting properties. Consuming warm lemon water in the morning can contribute to your daily vitamin C intake. For an in-depth exploration of the health benefits, I'm going to refer to a video from Dr. Berg, where he extensively explores the health advantages of warm lemon water. For our discussion, we will narrow our focus to its potential impacts on weight loss and anti-aging effects. To delve into these specific aspects, I'll insert a portion of the video. All right, number three, weight loss. Now, lemon water does not directly help you lose weight. It can indirectly help you lose weight. Now, quite a few studies on animals have shown this, but I want to help you understand the mechanism. Certain phytonutrients in lemon water stimulate significantly lower blood sugars. They reduce insulin resistance. So they lower insulin. And that is the reason why someone can lose weight. In fact, if you really want to know how to lose weight, what I would do is not try to research how to lose weight. I would research on how to lower insulin because anything that lowers insulin is going to help you lose weight. In fact, the fat cells cannot shrink It's impossible for a fat cell to shrink without lowering insulin despite your calories. All right, number four, lemon has an anti-aging effect. Now, yes, the studies were done in animals, but most studies do start in animals and then you progress to humans. But in the five-week study, they lived it on average three weeks longer. Now you might be saying, well, that's not a long time, but that's only five weeks. Think about if you started drinking lemon water on a regular basis for the rest of your life. It could add up. And they also found that lemon water extended the life of the microbiome, your friendly bacteria, which is pretty interesting. The crucial element is to use fresh, organic lemons. Avoid the pasteurized, pre-bottled lemon juice found in the supermarkets. It is advisable to engage in this routine first thing in the morning ensuring a minimum of 30 minutes before consuming any food, making it ideal for those practicing fasting. The timing is crucial because upon ingestion, the ascorbic acid derived from vitamin C transform into an alkaline state in the body, effectively inhibiting the digestive process. Dr. Berg delves deeper into this explanation later in the video. And you can find the link in the description below if you choose to watch the entire episode. But for a quick overview, essentially, slowing down digestion can have both positive and, well, negative effects, depending on the context. But here are a few reasons why someone might intentionally want to slow down their digestion. Number one is you'll gain blood sugar regulation. Slowing down the digestion of carbohydrates can help regulate blood sugar levels. When digestion occurs more slowly, the absorption of sugars is also slower, preventing rapid spikes in blood glucose. 
And number two, satiety and weight management. Slower digestion may contribute to a feeling of fullness and satiety, which can be beneficial for those trying to manage their weight. It may help individuals eat less by promoting a sense of satisfaction. I, for one, have definitely noticed this. And number three, nutrient absorption. Some nutrients are better absorbed when digestion is gradual. Slower digestion allows for more efficient absorption of essential nutrients, promoting overall health. And number four, stable energy release. Slowing down the digestion of food can result in a more gradual and sustained release of energy. This can help maintain energy levels over a more extended period, preventing energy crashes. I have firsthand noticed this as well. So for a comprehensive explanation, please consult Dr. Berg's full video. So my friends, now that you're convinced of all the benefits, let's discuss how to make it a seamless part of your routine. There are a couple of different methods to make your daily rise and rinse. You have the option to manually juice the lemon, although this involves using tools and creating it from scratch every morning. Personally, though, I do find this method acceptable. So let's go over the process. Ensure that you have your stainless steel hand squeeze juicer and organic lemon and warm filtered water. Of course, the cayenne and ginger if you prefer that as well. Simply squeeze half of the lemon into about 12 ounces of water. Add about a quarter of a teaspoon of ginger powder and or cayenne pepper, according to your preference, and savor that refreshing blend. The alternative method is to make it in bulk. To streamline my daily routine and enhance efficiency, I prefer preparing in advance on a larger scale. Lemon juice, when properly sealed, can be stored in the freezer for up to three months without affecting its texture or taste. When opting for larger juice batches, I prefer the convenience of my Breville juicing machine. If you are considering investing in a juicer, I wholeheartedly endorse this one. While it comes with a slightly higher price tag than its competitors on the market, its durability has far surpassed other options, providing longevity well beyond juicers with only a year's lifespan. It's a wise and enduring investment for your entire cellulite circuit journey. I'll add a link to the product in the description below. I typically extract juice from the entire lemon, including the rind. So I immerse the lemons in baking soda water before juicing just to make sure that I remove any dirt particles. And I personally love the taste of ginger, coupled with its numerous health benefits. So I'm prompted to juice a palm-sized piece alongside 8 to 10 lemons. Once your juice is mixed, pour it into ice cube trays and allow them to freeze completely. Once frozen, transfer the cubes into an airtight freezer storage bag or container. Depending on the quantity of lemons you began with, you're now stocked up for success every morning for a few weeks. My evening routine involves taking a frozen cube before bedtime, placing it in a mug, and leaving it in the refrigerator to thaw overnight. By morning, it's completely melted. Then I fill the mug with filtered water and warm it in the microwave for only a minute and a half. It's important to note that you're warming the lemon, not heating it. 
Heat can degrade certain nutrients, such as vitamin C. The heat may also have a negative effect on the beneficial enzymes and energetic properties, rendering the juice much less effective. The recommended ratio is approximately one tablespoon of lemon and ginger juice to about 12 ounces of water. Lemon is very acidic, and frequent exposure to high acidity levels may contribute to tooth enamel erosion over time. So this is why we emphasize the importance of diluting your lemon. This incredibly comforting yet revitalizing beverage is something I typically enjoy while writing my blog posts, making my bed, or preparing my daily cellulite cleanse, which I will cover in episode four. It remarkably programs my mindset for healthy food choices throughout the entire day. And as I mentioned earlier in this podcast, but Worth mentioning again, within just four days of incorporating it into my daily routine, I noticed a flattening sensation in my stomach and my jeans felt noticeably looser. The discomfort of that bloating feeling vanished, providing me with an exciting jumpstart on my new wellness program. While we are focusing on how to improve our overall health, I would be remiss if I didn't engage in kitchen tool talk. While aluminum is a commonly used material in kitchen tools and cookware, there are some concerns about its potential health risks. There are multiple reasons why some people choose to avoid using aluminum tools in the kitchen or allowing food to come into direct contact with aluminum. Here are a couple of highlights that you may want to consider. Aluminum leaching. One of the main concerns is that aluminum can leach into the food, especially when cooking acidic, lemon, or salty dishes. Acidic foods like tomatoes or the lemon and citrus fruits can react with aluminum, leading to increased levels of aluminum in the food. Which then brings us to health concerns. High levels of aluminum intake have been associated with various health issues, including neurological disorders like Alzheimer's disease. While the link between aluminum exposure and Alzheimer's is not fully established, some studies suggest a potential correlation, and that is enough for me to not have it in my kitchen at all. For those reasons and countless others, please do not purchase or use aluminum tools in your kitchen. Rather, look for handheld juicers that are made with stainless steel. For your convenience, I've provided links to all the products mentioned in this podcast. In the description, you'll find affiliate links to the recommended products. So my friends, here's to happy juicing and the radiant start to your day with Rise and Rinse, the first step in the cellulite circuit. I hope you're able to order your products and get started right away. Join us in episode four, where we will discuss the second step in the cellulite circuit. Until then, empower your journey one day at a time, my fabulous friends. I love you, and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for tuning into the Cellulite site. We appreciate you being part of our community, dedicated to exploring and sharing insights on cellulite health. Connecting with confident women like you is what makes this journey so fulfilling. Our mission is to simplify your path to progress and spare you from months of uncertainty. If you're ready to take your journey to the next level, visit thecellulitesite.com to grab your cellulite circuit checklist. Embark on your transformative journey today and in the coming weeks, witness firsthand how these concepts can make a positive impact. 
Remember, it's not just about absorbing information intellectually. It's about committing to the work and celebrating the results. A quick reminder, the content shared is based on personal experiences and perspectives and is not medical advice.